Caroline Dowd Higgins, host of Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena with wisdom to help you thrive. This podcast provides you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And today, I'm delighted to welcome my very special guest to the show today, Lisa Seacat DeLuca. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to get to know you better and have a juicy conversation about the incredible <laughs> things that you're doing. But Lisa, I do want to tell our global listening audience all about you. Lisa Seacat DeLuca is a software engineer, inventor, author, keynote speaker, and mom to two sets of twins. That alone is a whole show, Lisa, so we'll come (laughs) back and talk about that. But she's one of the 25 most influential women in IoT, which is also known as the Internet of Things, and MIT 35 Innovators Under 35, LinkedIn's next wave of 10 enterprise technologists, one of Fast Company's 100 most creative people in business, IBM's working mother of the year, for Working Mother Magazine, a TED speaker, a self-published author of two children's books titled A Robot Story, Learn to Count to Ten in Binary, and The Internet of Mysterious Things, and the most prolific female inventor in IBM history with over 250 patents. Wow, Lisa. I mean, (laughs) where to begin? Where to begin? But let's go back to the basics, okay? So women in STEM science, technology, engineering, and math are highly desirable in the workforce today, and and you're one of them. So how did you first discover computer science as an undergrad at Carnegie Mellon? And, you know, how did you begin this journey that led you to IBM? Sure. Yeah, I grew up in Helena, Montana, and I I wasn't really exposed to doing coding or even access to computers, really, other than doing, you know, AOL instant messaging and yeah. chatting with friends that way. And I started, I really liked websites, and I was like, I can do this myself. So I was like, let me make my own website. So I started looking into writing the code for websites, and I started with a drag and drop where you literally take the animated clip art and you yeah. put it onto a page, um, and you put it onto a page, and I just really really loved it. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I went to college. And my high school boyfriend at the time, he was kind of in, into computers. And we started looking at schools to apply to. And we both applied to Carnegie Mellon. And um, I got in and he didn't. Oh. <laughs> so I know. So I decided to go. And um, I don't know, I, I had a choice of doing computer science or information technology. And I heard it was harder to switch from IT over to computer science. So I figured I'd start with computer science. And I fell in love with it. I really liked it. It was hard, but um, I learned a ton. And I had some great internships. And I've just stuck with it ever since. Good for you. Good for you. Now, before we go into leadership, because you are an extraordinary leader, tell me about these four amazing kids. So two sets of twins. And uh-huh. clearly, as a as an author now of children's books, you're introducing your children early to to the beauties of STEM. Is is that fair? Yeah, yeah. I have, well, I had four under three when the girls were born. So my older set are boys and they're four. And then my younger set are girls and they're a year and a half now. So yeah, I'm always trying to figure out ways to get my kids excited about technology, but they're so young that it's yeah. really hard to do that. So I started writing the kids books, which you mentioned. And my first one was, you know, how to count to 10 in binary and all the books around our house is counting to 10. Um, and it's just memorizing how to count to 10. Right. What comes after three, it's four. So I wanted to do that with binary. Um, so that was my first book. And now I'm uh, currently raising money on Kickstarter for my second book, which is the Internet of Mysterious Things. And basically that explains how IoT works uh, with mysterious creatures. Oh, that's so cool cool. And you know, what I'm hearing too is it's never too young to introduce our children to the wonderful world of technology. Yes. Yeah. And I don't want to push it on them too hard. I want them to discover it themselves like I did and have a love for it, but still be exposed to it. And I don't want to push it on them, but I want them to also have that opportunity. I'm with you. Exposure will help with that. So that's exciting. So let's toggle back and talk about your philosophy as a leader, because your career is extraordinary. I mean, there's no other way to to put it. Really, you're an award-winning technologist recognized around the world for the great things that you've done, including over 250 patents. Have there been mentors or sponsors that have helped helped you navigate the career path, Lisa? 
For sure. I mean, I collect them like (laughs) anyone would collect a mentor. I have so many of them for all the different aspects of my life and my career where I might seek some guidance. Uh, One of my first mentors ever, his name is Sam Adams, and he is an IBMer. And we met when I was on my internship within IBM. And actually, he helped me get my first patent filed through the IBM process. So we go way back. And one of the things he's always really said to me was, um, you know, ask for forgiveness, not for permission yeah. and that i would say that's my philosophy is you know just do it go out there and try and see what happens i love it i love it, it so that's part of your leadership philosophy any any responsibility that you feel for grooming others especially uh you know emerging technologies perhaps at ibm and beyond yeah for sure i'm always I, it's hard for me to say no so anytime anyone <laughs> asks me to mentor them or you know go and speak about technology being a, a woman in in stem for example i usually say yes so i've been out doing conference talks i have actually on thursday i'm doing a skype call with a, a sixth grade class i don't even know where they're from but i'm gonna talk to them about you will? Investing. yes so that's yeah. so cool Good for you. And you really are a prolific writer, but tell me about these patents. Over 250. Give us a glimpse in, I I get the proprietary, you can't give away the secrets about what's in the patents, but give us a glimpse into how your work evolved into developing patents. Yeah. So actually my day job is not writing patents. It's my, you know, patenting is my night and weekend. It's my fun side project. Mm -hmm. Um, So like you said, I have 250 that have issued, but I have over 650 that I filed through the USPTO. So a lot in the running and it's, it kind of gets me excited about being a technologist, having this opportunity to write patents because it's me learning about new skills and new things that are out there and just guessing what the future might look like and predicting what I could take a technology, how it exists today and and form it into something new for the future. So my day job, I'm actually a software engineer. So I'm part of IBM's commerce division. We're now renamed to Watson Customer Engagement. So yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm adding cognitive technologies to a lot of our commerce portfolio. And I'm on an incubation team. So our team is a fast, almost like a startup environment where we're taking technologies and and trying to turn it on really quickly into something cool. That's amazing. Now, let me just ask, right? So you are clearly Wonder Woman and you have these (laughs) extraordinary superpowers. How do you handle your beautiful children, this extraordinary career at IBM? And then, as you said, your evening and weekend gig, you know, churning out (laughs) patents and writing and speaking. Do you have a secret for work-life integration? How do you stay healthy? (sighs) Well, how do I stay healthy? Okay, so this is a, a a trick that everyone should have, right? So I backed a Kickstarter for a sit-to-stand desk, and I had the desk for probably 24 hours when I realized that it wasn't going to work for me. I don't know. I was just like sore, my back hurt. Mm. I couldn't. I couldn't stand. So I bought a treadmill for yeah. underneath it, and I love it. It's like the best thing I've ever done. Because before that, I remember I got a Fitbit and I looked down at it, and it was like 4 p.m. and it said I had 300 steps. I'm like. <laughs> Something has to change. <laughs> right, and right. I just didn't have the time to get to a gym. Um, so this treadmill has just saved me. It's been it's been a great way to stay, you know, healthy, a little healthier than before anyway. And then as far as my support system, I would say my husband's super supportive and we have an au pair. She's from Brazil. Yeah. So she lives with us and helps with the kids. And it's just, you know, you can't be afraid to ask for help and, um, you know, farm out some of those tasks that are just are time consuming and not really fun. And like, you know, pay for someone to help come and clean your house once every couple of weeks or so. Uh, that makes a big difference. I so agree. Really successful people ask for help. And that's smart. So Lisa, let's talk as an entrepreneur, as an innovator. Do you embrace failing forward? And, and the reason I ask is people hear about this extraordinary career that you have and that you're continuing to move forward. And it can be a little daunting. Have you ever had a hurdle or a challenge? And if so, how did you overcome it? For sure. Um, it, IBM is such a huge company and every, I'd say every couple of years I get a little antsy and I'm ready for that next challenge. Yeah. Um, so I've had a couple of times in my career where I was ready to move on to another group and for whatever reason there's a hiring freeze um, or a, you know, a freeze for leaving a group and I was told I couldn't leave even there, though I had an offer in another group. And that was really hard because you get in your head that you're ready for that next thing um, but then you're told that you can't do something. Something. And every time someone tells me no, you know, I, 
have to prove them wrong right, and, right. and go do it. So I'd say that was probably the toughest part of my career, my biggest challenge. And that was just being disciplined with myself and really focusing on what I was doing and realizing that the opportunity was going to come again and I couldn't get discouraged. I still had to focus on, on where I was at at that moment. And eventually it did. And I was able to move to a new group. Good for you. But thank you for sharing that. That really means a lot. So you have this extraordinary power and influence to impact change. You have and you are. What are some of the things that you would like to move the needle on in the workforce or maybe particularly in technology in in the coming years, in the future? Yeah, there's a few things. So um, technology wise, I'd love to see NFC open for uh, by Apple uh, <laughs> for yeah. uh, reading and writing to tags. And um, I think that'll happen eventually, hopefully, because there's so many cool opportunities for NFC that the my book has NFC tags and that stands for near field communication. And basically, it's like a fancy QR code or barcode and your phone can read the information on it and do some really neat things. So they're pretty inexpensive. And I think that would add a lot of all of our regular everyday things would be a little bit smarter if we could add those tags um, as far as career wise and just um, stem and women in general I'd love to see more maternity leave um, mm -hmm. it, I, I know when I was pregnant with the girls, I reached out to a couple, you know, high up women in IBM and I said, you know, we need more maternity leave. And um, they actually, I don't know if it was it's something in the works before I, I reached out to them, but they added some additional bonding time for men and women to spend time with their kids. But I think it's so important that we honor the working parents in our, you know, across the industries and allow them to have time with their kids and then come back and do great things. I so agree. I so agree. Because the truth is your kids are the future, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to invest in you so you can nurture and grow and develop them and yourselves in the process. Yep. So let's talk a little bit. You're, you're so highly uh, recognized next wave of 10 entre enterprise technologists under 35, fast companies, 100 most creative people in business, MIT's 35 innovators under 35. I mean, it's extraordinary, Lisa. It goes on and on. What steps can others who are listening take in their careers to increase their visibility and value while leading change? Because clearly you are being seen and heard and, and you have a, a great stake in that. Oh, thank you. I, I would say you have to say yes before you can say no. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was invited... I was invited to do a TED talk for the first ever TED at IBM event. And I was so scared. I was like, I've never spoken in front of this many people before. And um, I was like, you know, this is a cool opportunity for me. And it's a once in a lifetime. So I said yes. And after my talk was over, I remember one guy came up to me and he said that um, if you ask, if you ask a, a man to do a talk like a TED talk, nine out of 10 say yes. But if you ask a woman, nine out of 10 say no. Wow. And that re really hit home to me. It's like, it's true. You have to take a chance on yourself before other people will take a chance on you. So that would be my biggest piece of advice. So just say yes to a few things, even if it makes you uncomfortable. Absolutely. Learn. You can make it happen. Good stuff. Yeah. So love the uh, the treadmill desk. I can, I, I can apps. Are you on it now? Are you? I'm, no. Okay. I wonder. <laughs> that would I wonder. be too noisy. Guys. I understand. Well, thank you for that. But I, I totally respect that. And you've probably got some great steps in and keep that heart rate going. But again, just with, with these extraordinary children, any tips or tricks for how you manage to protect time for yourself and your husband and your family? Because work can just take over. And sometimes it's because we we love it, but we don't want to miss our lives because we're working too much. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, keep um, a calendar and, and you can have a calendar that has your work and your personal stuff on it. I yep. like to block off time, um, you know, every Friday afternoon, I, I block off my lunch hour and sometimes I'll go and have lunch with my kids at their, their preschool. Um, so just little things to make sure you remind yourself that, you know, life is short. You got to take advantage of the time you have. Love it. So true. So wrapping up, what's the best advice that you want to share with those listening about thriving in life and career? Perhaps advice that someone shared with you or, or advice that you have for them. 
Yeah, I'm, it's probably cliche, but just love what you're doing. If you're in liking what you're doing, then um, it life life is enjoyable, and it you know you feel fulfilled. And the happier you are with your career and your personal life, just you're all around happy, and you share that passion with other people, and it's just um, you know addictive. And I really love what I'm doing, and I wouldn't change anything for the world. Well, you can hear the energy in your voice, my dear. It is palpable. So I want to thank you for that. Hey, you were extraordinarily prolific and social media. Tell us how we can follow you online. Sure. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Lisa Seacat. That's L-I-S-A-S-E-A-C-A-T. And uh, if you follow me and want to reach out directly, just tell me to follow you back and we can do a direct message. Awesome. Want to tell us a little bit about the Kickstarter project for book number two, children's book? Yeah, so head on over to Kickstarter and search for The Internet of Mysterious Things. Um, It goes through the end of February, and you can pre-order your book. I think it's about $35, and you can also get my first book in a bundle. Oh, that's brilliant. Lisa Seacat DeLuca, what a joy to have you on the show. I am so grateful for all that you're doing. I wish you continued success, and I hope our paths cross again soon. Me too. This was fun. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. The show is now available on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, and Stitcher. Be sure to subscribe so you get new shows every week and leave a comment about what's important to you in the career world and I'll consider your idea for a future show. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.